All right, so with the second one here, the reason how we knew that there was two electrons is because we could count that lead was giving up two and copper was taking those two. So it's going to be two moles of electrons, 96,500 again, and then instead of the 0.46, we have the 0.47. <clears throat> Divide our value by 1,000 to get it in units of kilojoules. The last one here, we had a negative 0.365. We put that value in. Um, six moles of electrons. Now, let's figure out how we got six moles of electrons for this chemical reaction. And this is something, again, that we talked about in Chem 105, but we'll have to remind ourselves how we uh, do these problems, okay? <clears throat> six moles of electrons. We can see that by taking this chemical reaction here, the dichromate ion goes to chromium ion, and the manganese oxide goes to permanganate, all right? We have to take this chemical reaction and separate it into its half reactions. This is a reminder of how we balance the reaction, and once we see it balanced, we can identify how many electrons transfer. So I'm going to separate this into half reactions. Cr2O7, 2 minus, going to Cr3 plus ion. All right? The other half reaction is our manganese oxide going to the permanganate ion. All right, so now we've separated it into two half reactions. The next step after we separate this into two half reactions is to make sure whatever elements that are not oxygen or hydrogen I have right now, make sure all those elements are balanced. So here I have two chromiums, and here I only have one chromium. I don't have to worry about the oxygen for the first step. I just anything that's not oxygen. So I need two chromiums. On the bottom here, I have one manganese, one manganese. I'm not worried about the oxygen yet. So that's done. The next step after that is to balance the oxygen by adding water to the side that needs more oxygen. So here's the dichromate ion, a total of seven oxygen atoms. I need to add seven water molecules to this side to make sure I have balanced the number of oxygens. Down here, I add oxygen, water to which side? The left side, because I need more oxygen on the left. I have two here and four there, so I'm going to have two water molecules added to the left. Now <clears throat> I balance the hydrogen atoms by adding hydrogen ions, H plus ions, to the more or the side that needs them. Okay, so here I have 14 hydrogen atoms, so I'm going to add 14 H plus ions to this side. Here I have a total of four hydrogen atoms on the left, so I'm going to add four hydrogen ions to the right. <clears throat> the next step is to balance the charges. The charges. All right, the charges are balanced by looking at the charges on all the species. So the charge here on this species is a negative two. The charge here on this species is a positive, but there's 14 of them. So that's a positive 14 up here. I'll put it in there, negative two. On the right side of the arrow, <clears throat> I have this chromium has a 3 plus, but there's two of them, so that's a positive 6. Over here, we have water, but there's no charge. So, the right side, I have a positive 6. The left side, I have a positive 12. Right, you see that? Positive 12, negative 2, positive 14. So, the more positive side, which is this one over here, needs electrons. And I add electrons, 12 electrons enough so that now this side, which because I added 12 electrons, that's like adding, uh, having 12 more negative charges. Now the sum of the charges on the left adds up to the charges on the right. Wait, no, sorry, that's not right. This is has a positive 14. I don't want to go to a 0. I want to go to a, sorry, this is a positive 12, positive 14, negative 2. I don't want to go to a 0. I only want to go to 6. So I just need 6 electrons here, so a negative 6. And that adds up to a negative 6, negative 2, that's a negative 8, and a positive 14. That adds up to a positive 6 now on the left, which is the positive 6 on the right. So I just want 6 electrons there. All right. Now I do that on the bottom here. <clears throat> How many electrons do I need to balance this 
the charges on this equation. I'll let you look at that with your neighbor. Try to identify how many electrons I need to add and which side I need to add it to. Go ahead and look at that and tell your neighbor how you know. All right, so it looks like on the left side, there's nothing with charges, no charges. So the sum of the charges on the left is zero. On the right side, however, I have a negative one here, and I have a positive four there. So that's a sum of a positive three. I have a positive four because there were four of these hydrogens, and each one had a positive charge. And this one had a negative one. So a sum of positive three here, sum of zero here. All right. So what do I need to do? I need to add electrons and try to balance this out. If I add three more electrons, it'll be balanced to the same as the left side there. So I add three electrons. Okay. Now I'm at a point where I can bring my two half reactions that have both been balanced by this method, which is called the ion electron method. I'm at a point now where I can add these two together. This is, is this an anodic reaction or a cathodic reaction, this top one? Well, I'm taking electrons and they're being added onto something. So this is a reduction reaction. Over here, I perform some process and electrons are released. So this is a, a oxidation. So this is an anodic reaction. So this is my anode. This is my cathode. Right, and the resulting process is going to be the sum of these two. But before I can add them together, I have to make sure that once they're added together, the electrons cancel out. So I'm going to have to multiply all of this by two so that the sum of these will drop out the electrons. But I don't need to go any further. I could go further, but I see here that the number of electrons transferred is going to be the six. So that's where we got the six from. All right. So we need to practice a little bit balancing those reactions. I think there's going to be at least one, maybe two, where you need to balance or recognize a balanced redox reaction. Okay. Very good. Now, If delta G naught equals 98.4 kilojoules, what's the value of E naught for the cell? All right. Well, I know that the relationship between delta G and E cell is based on, whoops, number of electrons and the Faraday constant. Faraday constant, 96,500. That's going to be provided for you. Number of electrons, we'll have to figure that out here. E cell. Can I figure out what the voltage for this cell is? Well, that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm, I mean, I might be able to do it simply by looking at this uh, standard reduction ta table, reduction, uh, table of reduction, standard reductions. But um, I've been given this as 98.4 kilojoules. I'm going to convert that to 98,400 joules right now because I know that this is going to be in joules per coulomb if it's in volts, right, which I'm seeing it is here. All right, so I'm seeing it is, let me show you right here. There we go. I'm seeing it is here, right? These are in volts. So this is going to be in volts, which is joules per coulomb, so that has to be in joules. All right, so go ahead and solve that one. Whoops, I forgot the N. We have to and we have to negative sign there. Don't forget that negative sign. So we got to find that n. So look at this equation. See if you can identify what the n is. Put it in there and then solve for this problem. And then when you're done, show your neighbor how you did it. Or if you don't know how, ask your neighbor.
All right, so n in this scenario, what is n equal to? n equals 2. We can see that the copper is, again, taking two electrons here, and mercury, each one is losing two electrons. So n equals 2, 96,500. We're looking for this value here, 98,400 joules. So solving for x, hopefully we got 0 0.510. Okay? All right. Now, as we saw in the last chapter, delta G also relates to um, K. Delta G relates to K, right? So this is the equation that we just introduced, the relationship between delta G and the voltage of a cell. And delta G also, as seen in the last chapter, relates to the equilibrium constant this way. Thus, we can compare E0 to K. All right. Um, equilibrium constant, right? K is our equilibrium constant. N, number of moles of electrons. F, Faraday's constant. E, voltage of the cell. All right. R and T are 8.314 if you're in kilojoules. And then T, uh, that's temperature in Kelvin. All right. So we're not going to go through these just because. Um, the likelihood of having one is slim. You'll want to practice at least once somewhere, but it's not going to be here in this class. Uh, it's just a plug and chug. It's just a plug and chug, and it's good to go through it once, and we'll walk through it here. But the uh, n number of electrons, we had identified that from a previous slide as 2. Okay, 96,500. Uh, there's our voltage right there. That is our delta G, right, and then R and our uh, temperature. Okay. So, <clears throat> we also have the ability to, from this same relationship, right, from the same relationship that we just saw, let me write it down here so we can go back to that slide. But E0 equals RTLN of K over NF. All right? And let's look at this a little bit deeper here. We just see delta E, RTLN of K, that's delta G divided by NF. Right? Okay, let's see. What are we missing? Uh, yeah, that's right because... Delta G is negative RT ln of K. And so when we bring in RT ln of K, the, the sign changes. All right. So we have this relationship here. And K could be expressed as Q if the concentrations aren't at standard conditions of the reactants or products. And this can be rearranged to show you the voltage under non-standard conditions. So E0 here is the voltage under standard conditions. This is the accumulation of uh, all the constants. So if we express it where all those constants are combined together, we pull out the, the E in natural log and just make it regular log, right, and combine it into here as well. Then we have this new equation, which is an equation that would be provided for you. And it's the called the Nernst equation. The Nernst equation allows you to relate E, which is voltage under non-standard conditions, to E0, which is, which is voltage under standard conditions. All right. And then um, that is, or, you know, there we got our constants, and then we have our log of Q, where Q is our quotient, and N is our number of electrons. All right. So that is our... Um, Nernst equation, again, identifying the potential from the standard redox potential. All right, so we're not going to work through any of these either.
All right, so that's a good place for us to stop today. So, um, after this uh, e electrochemistry chapter, we have one more chapter on nuclear chemistry, and we might be able to slide in another chapter on organic chemistry. Now, the reason we'd want to do that is because a lot of you are getting ready to take organic in the fall, and it would be good to have a little bit of preview. So um, there's a little bit of organic chemistry on the exams. Usually the amount of organic chemistry that's on the exams we've gathered just through having to know the names of a, a handful of chemicals. But um, it could, could also be helpful for a couple of questions on the exam. So we might be able to, to, to slip in one more, one more um, chapter after our nuclear chemistry. Because nuclear chemistry, there's just a few things we're going to gather from that. We're not, like this chapter, we're not gathering everything. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not a fan of the plug and chug. I, I think that it's good to practice at home, but I don't need to be working through most of those. I think that you can... Um, you know, you need to be familiar with the equation, know where to go and find it, but that's about it. So that's where we'll stop for today. All right. See you guys.